Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Harmony Islands. In the last episode, we finally made it over to the next great island in our journey, or maybe a chain of islands would be the better way to describe it. We have all of these tiny little itty bitty bits of land kind of stuck in this massive ocean. So it's going to be very interesting to see how our creatures manage to traverse those awful waves because some of them are very, very slow. I'm looking at you, Howell. He took a very long time to get to the ports, much longer than um, any of our other creatures that came with with us. So I would imagine it's going to be particularly difficult for our Barayena babies to claw their way through those waves. We don't actually have the water body just yet. We're working on our water body family over here with Siren and Aries, but tiny little Virgo only managed to receive the water body in her inactive traits, so she's not going to be able to use it to the best of her ability just yet. That being said, we might see them on her babies in the future if she does manage to start a little family of her own. Maybe she'll be able to pass that on over her medium body if we find her the right mate. She also has the fishing tail and um, the webbed paw, so she she will be able to move a little bit faster in the water anyway, and maybe she can catch us uh, some morsels too in the water, some little fishy morsels to eat. I think that's probably what uh, Beta and Howell are going to focus most of their attention on. Despite the uh, feud, their mother's feud that they're still working through, they seem to have the same sort of mindset. They're always in the same place. Maybe not by choice though. Beta must be getting very, very fed up with the way that Havel is always right in her shadow. So we'll have to see where they end up once they have a little bit more energy. And for now, we'll turn our attentions over to this lovely family right here. We actually found a brand new creature to bring into our tribe, little Rana, who was the island greeter. I'm wondering if maybe she is like a water remnant of the old kingdom. Maybe the few that managed to escape the old island came here instead and started to adapt to their surroundings. It's clear that Rana was just a little bit too afraid to make the journey though. Maybe she is a scared of water and she doesn't want to hop her way across because she's seen too many of her siblings, too many of her tribe mates get claimed by those same waves. So I think what I'll do is I'll give her a mixture of the uh, pink gems, of course, of the old kingdom, but also the blue too, to signify that she's part of the uh, water line, since she does have those big frog toes. So it's not going to help her breathe underwater, but it does help her move just a little bit faster on the beach. Now, I think she's probably going to breed with the dust, along with uh, Silaire and Rara, of course, because they are looking for a way to appease the god of the harvest. They have found all of these berry bushes, but unfortunately they're all shriveled up because they're in the middle of a drought right now. So what we'll do is we'll have them start clearing out this land to um, maybe get to the tree. That would be a good spot to find some acorns, and that is probably uh, Van Keer's favorite food. He does love his berries, but with that big giant cracker jaw that he had, I think he would enjoy the uh, taste of acorns a little bit more, so they'll use that as um, their offering to him, just like how Ares and Siren are using the algae in the water to build their nests for Splash. In fact, if we have Ares dip his toes into the water, he might be able to scoop this one up. It looks like uh, the little piranha may have been using it as a home, but we need to use it for our nests. Now if we bring him over here, Siren should be able to settle down next to him and probably take that leech off of him. It looks like that leech is going to attach right to his neck. So since that breeding failed, we won't have to worry about uh, building a nest on this turn either. We'll just remove the parasite from Ares and we'll have them breed again on the next turn. I guess some um, their fertility is a little bit lower than some of their tribe mates. Well, honestly, they have um, some of the highest fertility here, so it's quite surprising that that failed. I wonder if that's a little bit of a sign from Splash himself. A bad omen, maybe. We'll have to keep that in mind. And look at this baby. Oh my goodness, Vixen. She has the big body. So she's almost as big as her mother already, even though she was literally just born. Oh, poor Cola. Maybe we should have you scoot out of the nest so you have a little bit more room to breathe. Vixen is actually the first of the newest generation to be born beneath the Sisterhood of Warriors. And she is certainly going to be quite the warrior with her big giant claw and her ram horns. So I guess she's going to get her training from her mother, Cola, and also a Willow, of course. 
Cola would trust Willow with her babies very easily because she's been such a good friend to her. Maybe if we're lucky though, we can get a, another baby from this pairing. There we go, we'll plop down a nest for Cola. And then we might as well zoom out just to make sure that nothing is going to come slithering out of the grass. In all honesty, there's not that much room to work with here. So I'm not sure how much can really spawn on this tiny little bar of land. I think um, the major trouble is going to come once we branch off to these different islands. But let's see what Cola's newest little baby looks like. I think it was actually a male. Yeah, it does seem like it. You can see his giant mane on top of his head and of course that big body again. So apparently the big body is um, a little bit more dominant than even the spiky body. That's very surprising. So Takir's spiky body hasn't taken over like it did for all of Eve's children. I guess that's a good thing though because we do want to be able to use those tail genetics. So he has um, the big nose too. Oh, he's the first creature with the big nose. That's excellent. So he'll be able to really sniff around in the grass to uh, tell us if we have any dangers to uh, be concerned of. Maybe he could even help out his sister. He's not as strong as she is, unfortunately, because he doesn't have the ram horns. But if he can alert her to any dangers in the grass before they notice, then that will definitely be a very, very valuable trait to keep in the tribe. So I think we're going to name the this little baby Clay to, of course, honor his father, the artist Takir. He has the same little no paw too, so who knows? Maybe he'll also take on um, his father's ways. Since he won't be fighting as much as his sister, he might find a little bit more joy in uh, being creative like Takir. Now, Vixen is a little bit too young to send off after Willow just yet but we'll have her toddle her way out of the nest so her mother can at least use it in the future. That way she can get a front row seat to a willow as she explores the grass as well. And maybe we should have Cola make her way down to the ocean waves to see if she can find any fish for her children. Since she does have those two big claws, she might be a pretty good at scooping up those fish. I don't see any in the area just yet though. Oh, there they are, of course, just out of reach, but you might be able to snag them up on the next turn if you're lucky. For now, your mate will be able to feed your babies all of these lovely berries, though unfortunately we're still in the middle of a drought, so you guys better pick up your acorns, okay? We'll have a rah -rah come over here to pick up the ones from behind, and maybe clear out a little bit more of this grass too, just in case. It looks like Rana is uh, pretty good at spying the acorns, but she's not going to be able to pick them up. She's the only one without the nimble fingers in this um, little group after all, so she might have to knock down the acorns instead of trying to crack them open. But with every last acorn picked up, it seems like we might be able to uh, start their family on the very next turn. And oh no, Silaire, you found a little mole in the uh, grass, but unfortunately, I think it is going to uh, see you before you can get to it because we still have the Baryena babies to move, and you guys are definitely going to be looking for uh, some sort of snack down by the shores, aren't you? For some reason, they always seem to have the very same mindset. So Beta is going to go a little bit deeper into the water to try to find some sort of fish, though unfortunately it's a little bit bare out here too. Maybe it's because we have all of these rocks out here instead of those algae piles, so they might have to risk themselves in the deeper portions to really find something to eat. Being so close all the time though, they wouldn't be able to help but notice each other's skills. So this might be where they start growing curious of each other. They're still very wary because of their mothers, of course. Their mothers warned them about this, but with so much in common, especially since they're both essentially outcasts, they are going to uh, start to wonder. Now we can give our first little water baby Virgo her very first blue gem and then let's see if we can get started on the rest of this family here. Thankfully last time we made sure to uh, place the better eyes in their mutation menus because surprisingly Siren has some a uh, pretty poor eyesight hidden away in her genetics and so does Aries. So poor little Virgo saw the worst of that. She has the short-sighted eyes and the blindness in her inactive traits. We'll have to keep a very very close eye on that in the future. Now we'll leave her close to her mother so we can send Ares off to um, gather up some more of this algae, of course, to offer to a splash. And look at that, he found one of those shells. Oh, maybe it's some um, a little sign from the Balanced Sisters. Though if it ends up disappearing, I would imagine it would be the uh, Bandit Twins instead. Either the Bandit Brothers trying to trick us into the deeper waters, or the Balanced Sisters sending us a little fortune. Now let's go ahead and skip the day again and cross our fingers that this baby might have that lovely water body. I don't think it's the water body, but look at you. You are absolutely gorgeous. Again, he has it in his inactive traits, so there is a very 
very good possibility we could pull it out later, but oh my gosh, he almost reminds me of Spirit with that big stinky tail and that bright white fur. Spirit was Siren's sister, so I wonder if that would maybe make her think of her old home, make her a little bit homesick. Oh my gosh, she has two velvet paws too. Oh, he's a very, very sneaky creature on top of it all. So I think we're going to name him Crest, as in the foamy crest of a wave since he looks like he could be part of the sea foam himself. And then we'll have to see if Ares was a tricked after all. I think the shell actually moved. Did it move a little bit to the side? Oh, that's interesting. It definitely seems like the Abandit brothers are playing with you a little bit. So the Ashells were often an offering that we gave to the Balanced Sisters to um, have good fortune in our tribe, of course. Nice balanced babies. But I feel like the Bandit Brothers would basically be the opposite of the Balanced Sisters, so chaos instead of balance. And since they also love the shells, it makes sense that they would have a little sneaky hand in the spawning of them too. Now let's see how the Baryena babies are doing way back here on the other side of this tiny, tiny little island. Yeah, I think they're going to um, risk it. They're going to See if they can get across this big giant gap without harming themselves. So Howell, of course, would be the first one to dive in because he wants to show his stuff. He wants to make his mother proud. Now the deepest he can go is right down to the ocean floor, but that seems like it would definitely cause him to drown. Let's see if he can um, settle himself down on this port, and hopefully that's not going to be too deep, though honestly it does seem like he's underwater at this point. Oh Howell, you may have gotten yourself in a very sticky situation. Beta could possibly cross the water if she's very careful. Maybe she would find it easier to uh, go down the shore a little bit more. Oh no, she's actually drowning already. Oh, Beta, but you did manage to find some fish and a bunny, so that's good. I think Howell would definitely notice that, though. Let's bring her out of the water. Oh, she took so much damage. Oh, poor Beta. And let's bring him out of the water, too. Luckily, he didn't drown, and it must be because he has um, a larger body than she does, so he was able to stay afloat a little bit more than she could, but poor, poor Beta. That would be Howell's chance to maybe pull her out of the water, because despite their differences, they don't want to see each other hurt. In fact, they might be starting to realize that they are really nothing like their mother said they would be. And maybe this will be their chance to talk overnight, get to know each other a little bit better, and of course, some um, explain the ways of their mothers. Honestly, it was always their mother's feud, and I think they're going to uh, start to realize that pretty soon. Now, Cola, can you find any more fish down here? It looks like the fish swarm you found before may have moved on. Yeah, they're going a little bit further down the shore. So I wonder if she's going to be okay if she goes a little bit deeper? She has the lean body, so we'll have to uh, be careful that she doesn't get too deep into the water. She would have a very, very hard time staying afloat, and Takir and her children will be super worried if she stays out for too long. But they still have their berries to keep them occupied. They're very, very few little berries because, yet again, we still don't have any rain. Despite picking up all of these acorns, we still haven't appeased the uh, god of the harvest. So let's bring Vixen out this way so she can help out her um, own mentor, Willow. I guess Willow Willow will be mentoring her a little bit, at least on how to hunt, how to track down prey, and maybe even how to take down crabbits if we can find any. Let's move our nest a little bit further down the shore if we can. We'll follow after Ares, of course, and breed with him one more time. And then um, maybe Virgo can come down here and try to find some more of those shells with her father. She has grown her second gem, and oh no, I think she just picked up a leech too. Oh, it must have been hiding in that algae pile. So we might have to ask Rana to uh, come over here and take that off of you. Maybe she's actually scared of the leeches then. I wonder if that's why she decided that she didn't want to go with the rest of her tribe. But let's see if starting a family in Van Kier's name will uh, give him a reason to give us a little bit of fortune maybe. We'll bring Rara over here so she can breed with dust. And then on the next turn, she can settle down her own little nest right underneath her. And then we'll have um, Silaire breed with dust too, but we're going to want to make sure the mutation menu is set up correctly. She does have that no paw situation after all, so she'll need the uh, running leg and her mutation menu. And then we might do the same thing that we did with Cola and give her the normal fertility in the second slot just to try to get rid of that infertile trait because we don't want her babies becoming infertile. No pause and infertility. That would end up just like the old kingdom. So let's try to uh, avoid that. Now Takir can spend some time with his son and maybe even teach him how to paint with all the mud on the shore or draw on the sand if they go try to find Cola. But for now, let's zoom on out and uh, cross our fingers that this baby is the lucky
lucky one that we need for Van Keer's blessings. Well, still no rain, unfortunately. Still no rain, but this baby happens to look quite a bit like the rain of the previous island. And not only that, but you can just barely see her spots. I guess she has um, the gray spots right on top of the gray fur, so they're very hard to see. But she does actually have some very pretty dots all across that big body. Not only that, but she managed to receive the running leg instead of that no paw, so that's a very good thing too. But no nimble fingers, surprisingly, despite the fact that both of her parents have those nimble fingers, so I guess that's why Van Keer didn't uh, favor this child. But I think we're going to name her Cloud in reference to um, her grandmother, of course. She would definitely think of her mother Rain when she looks at this tiny little baby, so Cloud would be a good name for her. Now let's scoot on back here to our Baryina babies to make sure they're okay. Yeah, poor Beta took so much damage. Oh, I feel so sorry for her. Let's bring Hamel over here so they can talk a little more closely. After such a harrowing event, and after realizing that they are truly nothing like their mothers said they would be, I think they are ready to put that all behind them. Maybe they're starting to realize that it would be much easier to prove themselves as Baryina babies if they work together instead. Beta Beta never expected it to be so very hard to make friends on this island. She's always been a very, very friendly creature after all, so it was very shocking and very depressing too to find that nobody really wanted to spend any time with her. So Howell is going to provide plenty of comfort in that regard, especially as they start their own family. You guys have noticed that the two Baryina babies have completely different immunity genes, which is absolutely wonderful, because hopefully that means we can bring out those special genetics that they have hidden away in their inactive traits. So let's give this a try. After putting aside their grievances, we'll have them hopefully breed. The low fertility of the Baryinas might be a little bit of an issue. I guess we're going to have to wait just one more day before we can see our hybrids, but at least they're moving in the right direction now. We do have a couple other babies that are ready to be born though. We'll of course have to make another nice big nest out of all of that algae for Siren to use, and she can pick up a little bit of the grass in the meantime. Then why don't we bring Crest up on this hill so he can get a better look at his home? We have so many little tiny babies running around the place now. They're all going to make wonderful playmates. We'll go ahead and have Siren scoop up this nest. She is getting a little bit old now. She only has three days left on her life, so we'll have to see if we can have her have um, just a couple more babies in the meantime. We want to have have that water body in as many of our babies as possible because clearly it's going to be very hard to cross this water if we don't have the right genetics. Now let's have Takir and Clay try to find Cola. She's still trying to find those fish after all, so maybe Clay could even help her out. He does have a claw, so he would be pretty good at picking up the fish, while his father picks all of the berries instead. The fish do seem to have a uh, moved on, but she did find a shell. And there's the fish, all right, always just out of reach. We might let her son try to grab those fish after all, since he does have a much bigger body than she does. So for now, you could try to crack open the shell, or wait a second, the fish are gonna come up to see you. Excellent. So you managed to trick them. She must have been uh, pretending to crack open the shell in the meantime just to get the fish to let their guard down. Now your daughter, uh, Vixen, is doing a very good job clearing out this area with her mentor. We'll go ahead and pick up the rest of this grass and I guess you guys are probably going to be uh, trying to set foot on the other islands too. They're going to want to see if they can find any special resources in these places, the healing fruits and whatnot. I have a feeling that um, Silaire and Rara are probably going to bring their children over to those islands too. They want to make sure that they're going to have the same training that they did when they were their age. They learned how to heal, they learned how to forage, and they learned how to be strong and courageous too. So we'll have to find the right mentors for each one. Now Rana, let's finally bring you over here to a start your own family too. We don't want to forget about you. We'll go ahead and have a dust pick up this grass so you're not completely buried. And then we'll make sure that you have um, the right mutations in your mutation menu. She has the webbed hind legs, but honestly, that might benefit us right now. If it'll help us move through this deeper water a little bit faster, then we won't have to worry about the uh, drowning issues. So instead, let's focus on the blindness inside her inactive traits just to try to get rid of that as soon as possible. And then maybe we should place a, a different type of 
have snout on there too? Oh, why don't we try for the cracker jaw? Since some um, this is Van Keer's line in a way, Van Keer's followers returning once more, it would be great if we could get a little cracker jawed baby in the mix too. So why don't you go ahead and breed with her? That way she can still place down the nest right next to you. And then we can bring Silaire over here to hopefully pick up all of the rest of these berries, every last berry that she can possibly find despite the current drought. It looks like we just have Aries here and our little water baby left. So can you guys find any more shells by any chance? We have lots and lots of algae to gather up, so why don't you help out your family and make sure you pick up a few more of these for us. Otherwise though, that is the end of this turn, so let's see if Vancare is going to be a little bit happier today. Hopefully. Yeah, it is actually raining. Excellent. All right, so we finally, finally appeased Vancare in some way, and maybe it's because we're trying to get the Cracker Jaw now. Maybe that was enough to make him happy. But look at this little spotty baby. You are very, very similar to your mother with the gray spots, of course, but a pink fur instead of the lovely red color that reminds me of a mushroom. Maybe we could even name you Rose to go along with that lovely color. The pink ram horns and the pink fur. For the most part, I would expect this family to go along with the traditional old names of the old kingdom, but I guess for their very first children, they wanted to uh, name them in a way that would remind them of their family. And Cloud, of course, and the rosy pink gems that Rose herself will wear. Rana's baby is looking very, very pretty back here too, with her lovely blue eyes and her pale fur, quite similar to Crest actually, so maybe a little blessing from the water god too. Because of that, I think we'll go ahead and name her Marina, which is a very, very pretty water-related name. And then let's see if our Baragina babies can finally start their family. Howell should use his energy first if possible. There we go, that way Beta can still actually place down one of the nests. And now we can truly get started on some of our very first hybrids, if we're lucky. We do have access to quite a few of those inactive traits, so I can't wait until we're ready to pass the day. Let's make sure that we gather up all of the food that we can. I suppose Virgo should make sure she picks up the berries, but we're going to have to have Aries come over here and pick off the leech from her so she can do the same for him. They managed to find quite a few leeches overnight. No wonder Rana was so worried. So they can both pick up some berries for their brand new family member because it looks like we also have another little girl down here in the nest with the bandit mask. Oh, she managed to get the bandit mask back. We haven't seen that in so long. So no wonder the bandit twins were following us so closely on these shores. They knew that they were going to give one of their babies that lovely mask as well. So it would only be right if we gave her a very mysterious name to go along with it. And I think we'll name her Illusion. She does have the um, water body, it seems, inside her inactive traits too, so that's good to see. So after a couple of generations, we should hopefully see the water-bodied babies returning in full. Now we'll have to get all of our nimble fingers on food collecting duty while it's still raining. So Silaire can gather up all of those, and then we could have our little baby toddle out of the nest too, right between the um, other two berry bushes. We'll have Rara go to the other side of her so she can show her the very best ways to pick the berries, even though she she doesn't have the nimble fingers herself, she still should be able to pick up quite a few in one good swipe. Dust will stay behind with the kids while Rana goes out here to uh, find some more berries in the meantime. Since he is quite a bit older, he probably needs um, a little bit more rest, I would think. We'll have him just pick up the grass, make sure all of his babies are nice and safe and sound. We haven't had to deal with the birds in the skies in a very long time, so I think these are still considered the easy islands. Despite how difficult it is to traverse this landscape. We don't have to worry about the birds swooping down and trying to steal our babies. Crest, I suppose, might get curious with all of the noise in the nest. He probably wants to meet all of the new babies too. He is very, very young himself, so let's bring him up here next to uh, the newest little addition, Little Marina, and maybe they can get to know each other. They can play in the rain and enjoy some nice berry snacks. Now, Vixen is just about to grow up, so this is probably a good um, opportunity for her to come down here and get ready to try to jump to the next island. Now, this is going to be very difficult for Willow because, of course, she is um, close to the end of her life, too. So we don't want to risk her drowning, either. That would um, basically guarantee that she would end up drowning under the waves. So we'll have to be very, very careful while she's maneuvering around. And yeah, I think we do want to cross right here 
because it's not quite as deep as the water by the rocks. So the Baryena babies definitely had the right idea in mind, and maybe they can even share that knowledge to a Willow and Vixen to get them to trust them more. Now the fish may have eluded you yet again, Cola. Can you see any out here? We'll bring your son Clay down the shore to um, try to sniff them out too. He has that big giant nose after all, so he would definitely be able to uh, smell any morsels in the grass. It looks like we have a, a nice mole right down here being scared away by Ron at the moment. Maybe he's a little bit more interested in the uh, land food, in fact. Those with very, very strong scents for him to sniff out. But he's more than willing to help his family, especially as Cole is going to make her way out of the water and uh, maybe have a one more baby with Takir. He's another one who's getting a little bit older, so we want to make sure he has some more babies too. This should be the last of our turns though, unless somebody has a leech. Does somebody have a leech right now? Oh no, did you guys find another leech or was that from before? Let's just make sure. It looks like they're okay, that's good. So we don't have to worry about anyone getting hurt overnight because honestly, I am much more interested in seeing what this little baby is going to look like. So our very first hybrid baby if we're lucky oh my gosh you almost look exactly like your mother that brown fur just like a baryena unfortunately it looks like he didn't even um keep that baryena snout in his genetics so he was a little bit less lucky than his parents were and just like that too he also does not have the ram horns he does not have any sort of patterns so this family has clearly fallen from the good graces of anime maybe even more so now that they're carrying on this scandalous Baryena lifestyle and having children of their own, but I think we'll name this little baby Scratch, because it looks like he has a tiny little claw just like his mother, so I'm sure he'll be doing plenty of scratching in the future. Let's move Howl over here though, so we can hopefully have yet another baby. I see that bunny hopping around up there, but honestly, he is not going to get too far. This place is very, very small, and we have so many of our creatures surrounding it right now, that bunny is definitely going to be someone lunch. On the plus side, it should be much easier for um, the babies to move rather than Howl, since he did have the big body, of course. It looks like Scratch is going to be a little bit more nimble because he has his mother's medium body and the regular hind legs instead of those Baryena hind legs. So maybe he will be able to make it over to one of the new islands after all. Maybe we can even call one of these islands Baryena Island and they can take over with their family. It would be really, really cute if we could build base for each of the families on these different places. But of course, in the end, we want to get them all to the north yet again to get to um, the next challenge island in our journeys. So we'll have to make sure that they're all moving together as well as we possibly can so we don't end up with those situations like Howell on the previous island who took a very long time to get to the ports. But I think they're finally making progress. Now that they've put their mother's feuds behind them and they're having tiny little Baryena babies of their own, and not only that, but they seem to be gaining the trust of um, Willow and Vixen after all. They're going to try their hands at moving through these um, slightly more shallow waters to see if they can get to the next island and find some better resources. We are going to have to try to find the healing fruits, especially if we have a lot of trouble with drowning, because then at least we could heal the damage that they take. So as Crest the Hunter provides food for all of his brand new friends, next time we'll see if uh, maybe Ra-Ra and Silaire could take their children out as well, because that would be a very good learning exercise for them. If they could discover their own precious resources deep in the grass, I'm sure that would be a good way to get them in the old god's favor as well. Clearly, Vankir is already quite pleased, though Anamim is a different story. She is clearly not too happy about all of these Baryenas running around the place, so hopefully she's not cooking up some uh, nasty challenges for us to face in the future. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!